Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I do thank you so much for this day, and for the rain, for the ups and downs. Help us to learn that we can accept those things around us and still have a peace that passes all understanding inside of us. That the outside doesn't have to control us, but rather that the outside can just influence us in getting closer to you, no matter what it is, no matter how tough it is, no matter how wonderful it is. Everything can bring us closer to you if we set our minds and our hearts on you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel for today comes to us from John chapter 2. It reads like this. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign do you show for us show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and three days I will raise it up. Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for forty six years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. Well, like I said, happy Sunday. Happy morning. (laughs) Storm just blew through a little bit ago. but I wanted to do this now. You know, it's interesting. As I thought about these scriptures, you know, this past week, I thought to myself, You know, I brush my teeth a minimum of twice a day. I clean my body every day. I even wear clean clothes daily. And yet I wonder how many times I actually anticipate and clean my brain and my heart. I wonder how many times I'm intentional about that. The story in the gospel that we have today from John chapter 2 is the story of Jesus cleaning the temple. It says cleansing the temple. Clean and cleanse are pretty much the same word. Cleanse is just used in sort of certain things where clean is used in other things. But Jesus goes into the temple. It tells you that he goes in and casts out the, the sheep and the goats and, you know, overturns the money changers tables and scatters the coins and, you know, drives them out and that he even sends off the doves. It's interesting to me because I'll never forget the first Bible study I was ever in. There was a criminal defense attorney. And when we read this scripture, he looked at us all and he said, "Uh Oh, Jesus is really in trouble. And we all looked at him and said, what do you mean? He said, well, it says that he made a whip out of cords. That was premeditated. That's first degree. I have to laugh. Jesus was intentional about what he was going to do. And he went into the temple to cleanse it, to stop the people that were there that had taken over his father's house from turning it more and more into a marketplace, which it was never intended to be. You know, Was it just about cleansing the temple? Was it just, uh, in a sense, a sort of a foreshadowing of what he was going to do for the rest of his life? Or was it also an analogy of what he wanted to do in our everyday life? What he wanted to do with his followers? To cleanse the temple ourselves, not just, you know, our body and clean it, not just our teeth and brush them, but to clean our souls, our heart, our heart, minds, our strength. 
You know, that only comes in forgiveness, I believe. And cleansing here and forgiveness, I think, sort of dovetail together in a certain special way. I have to say that one thing before we go into this, and that is, is that when Jesus cleaned the temple, it wasn't like he lost control of his emotions and just got so angry about it. He was angry. Being in control of your feelings isn't denying your feelings. It's being congruent with yourself. In other words, if you're angry, then you act angry. You don't have to be violent. If you're happy, you act happy. If you're sad, you act sad. Most of us, when we're afraid, we don't act afraid. We don't acknowledge we're afraid. We actually turn our fear into anger and focus that anger because anger is easier to deal with than fear. Fear f- feels out of control. Anger feels like we're in control. But Jesus goes in not denying his feelings about what's going on. But notice the authorities in the temple, they don't press charges against them. They don't like it. But they question him, why did you do this? Why did you take this upon yourself? What was going on? So obviously he didn't really hurt anyone physically. Obviously he didn't do anything that was charge a bowl. But what he did was he made a point using his frustration to make the point that we have to clean ourselves up. As I said just a few moments ago, forgiveness and cleansing I'm going to use very close. And a lot of times I think when we think of forgiveness, we think of it sort of as, well, if I ask forgiveness, then everything is all right. And uh, it's like a get out of jail free card. I, I don't know that it's get out of jail free. In other words, there's no consequence to your action ask after you ask forgiveness because I've asked for forgiveness and I've had consequences. But I do believe it's get out of, in a sense, adjudication if you really ask for forgiveness. Forgiveness is much less about even the other people sometimes and more about what you need to do for yourself. You can ask for forgiveness from someone else, and it's great when they say, yes, I forgive you. But if they don't say you forgive you, then you've done your part and you've done as much as you can opening the door to having the reconciliation take place from the other person, even if they don't forgive you. You can forgive people who have died. And you can get forgiveness from people who have died if all of a sudden you turn it over to the living God. You know, this past week I mentioned a person who, uh, as I put it, I was very raw and trying to be authentic last week. And I have to report to you that, you know, I never really got face to face with my friend yeah, as of yet. But we've had enough conversations to where I know that he loves me and I love him. And that we might not have worked out all the details, but there's forgiveness between the two of us. That our relationship isn't severed. Actually, our relationship is stretched to where I hope it can become even stronger. But what it really did for me in that process was the confession and the rawness, it made me look at myself and say, you know, I got to own the things that I do when I hurt someone. And just as when I clean my body, I try and get all the, excuse my French, nooks and crannies. And when I brush my teeth, I also floss. So I get the nooks and crannies. So too, do I have to get the nooks and crannies in my heart and in my soul? You know, most of us think that Forgiveness is this thing where, okay, well, ask forgiveness almost like saying I'm sorry. And it's it's not really the same, where it's just this sort of action that you take that sort of says, okay, we're okay. But if you don't forgive and move beyond it, I'm not saying forget, but forgive and set it behind you, you never have really fully forgiven. You never move beyond the place that you were. Jesus 
when he went into the temple to cleanse it. Got the ropes together, rolled it into a whip. He was premeditated. Are you premeditated when you clean yourself? Or is it just an action that you go through? And when he cleaned the temple, it doesn't say that after he did it, he went back and he set the tables up, got the doves gathered together, put them back in the cages, put, you know, did anything. It says that he left it that way in a mess. You know, I really believe that when we clean our hearts, it's going to be messier than it was before because we had an order before of how we looked at ourselves and how we felt about ourselves. And now all of a sudden, that's got to all go out the window. When I've wronged somebody and had to ask for forgiveness, I got to say, I own it. I messed up. And so the way I looked at myself as, oh, just this really good guy. Well, you know what? There's a part of me that's not. And so am I going to put it back in the same order as I had it before so I can make the same mistake again? Or am I going to learn from that sense of confession and forgiveness and hopefully reconciliation to where I don't put it back together the way it was before so I can do it again? You know, as we move through Lent, you're supposed to look at yourself. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Confess your sins and ask for forgiveness. Be reconciled to each other. Yes, but it's not supposed to go back to exactly the way it was before, where it was broken. It's supposed to go to a new place, not where it's even fixed, but where it's healed. Where it's strong and you begin to exercise the new way you have a relationship with God with others, and especially with yourself. Most people have a very difficult time forgiving themselves. We ask God for forgiveness, and we kind of assume that he's forgiving us, and we kind of know he's forgiving us because he loves us, and we've been told that over and over again. But you know what? Until you come to the place where you actually say, I can forgive myself because God forgives me. You never reach the place where God's really smiling fully at you. Because you've got to let go of that stuff that tore you apart. That stuff, not where you acknowledged your brokenness, but where you said, I acknowledge my brokenness and I'm not going to participate in that brokenness like I did before. Maybe you won't do it exactly right the first time. Maybe it's going to take a couple of times. But you can move away from where you are right now into a little bit more what you ought to be. They'll withhold adjudication. The consequences always take place. You know, Jesus, when he was on the cross, died for the sin of the world. And when he showed himself after the cross, He still had the holes in his hands, the hole in his side. He showed the consequences of what he went through. But he didn't let those things slow him down as he moved deeper and deeper into resurrection and deeper and deeper into drawing people to him. He carried what went on in the past and utilized it for the good of people for the future and for the good of He and God with us in the future. Will you take what's gone on in your life that has been broken, acknowledge it, ask for forgiveness of it, knowing that God, if you genuinely ask him, will genuinely forgive. But at the same time as he's genuinely forgiving you, you have to genuinely forgive yourself and not forget what's gone on. But don't let it dominate your thought so that you keep tearing yourself down instead of rather letting God build you up. Will you set it behind you so that you don't make the same mistake again, but not let it be the focus of your life, continually saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Rather know that you are and celebrate by living in a sense of joy.
Once again, as I said last week, I hope this one makes sense. I love y'all, and thanks for listening to me. Remember this, though, as you heard me say a thousand times. God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, but the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference so that we can become a little bit less, less of what we are right now and become a little bit more of what we ought to be. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.